If you're watching this video right now, you are likely in the top 10% of the world's population as far as wealth goes. If you have clothes, food to eat, clean water to drink, a little bit of money and roof over your head, you have it all to the millions of people who don't have clean water to drink, who are so poor that they can't eat, who are in a part of the world that is such a mess that they can't create the life of their dreams there. They just have to scrape by to survive. It's survival of the fittest. And we're over here in America with the ability to create an amazing life of success and opportunity and reward if we just apply ourselves, if we just think about what we want and work at it. And that's incredible. And with basically the world in the palm of our hands, we're over here in first world countries worshiping things. Friends. Friends. I'm literally home decor obsessed. I've been doing a lot of shopping at Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, all over, like everywhere that sells home decor. Purple, pur purple, how fun is that? Farmhousey tiered trays are so in right now. How cute is this? Look how big it is. I knew I had to have this sign. It's so beautiful. How'd you have this? How'd you have this? A really cute way to display like crackers and cheese. I basically have to have it. You have to have it. That is so adorable. How adorable is this? If you love something, you don't set it free. You buy you it. Buy it. Buy you buy it. it. Together as a society, we have co-created and been sucked in to the world of materialism, where we literally give our souls, our mind, will, and emotions to things. How about we meditate on this? things, objects, items, to houses, which are just big fancy boxes in which our bodies reside in. We worship things that look nice, that are shiny, that are beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. It is wrapped, like my last one, it is wrapped in rose gold. And we're creatures of the eye, so it's natural to a certain extent for us to like things based upon what they look like. But when you look at what we have done and what we are doing and how we have the ability to literally change the world, each and every one of us has the ability to make a massive impact on this planet and change lives for thousands of people, thousands of animals, and for future generations. And you take a look, it's like we are window shopping while the world falls apart around us. We spend so much time trying to buy nicer things and get nicer things and make our already nice houses and apartments look nicer and nicer and we want more and more and more and it's all just stuff. It's all going to rot away a few hundred years after we do. Every house that you ever live in, every house that anyone will ever live in will one day just be dust. And we have a short period of time. You have a limited amount of days left in your life and if you take a moment to review how you're spending it, you might be disappointed in yourself. I know that I'm disappointed in myself. I know that I've spent the past couple of years spending so much time on things, items, putting so much of my consciousness into fantasies about having this kind of house and that kind of car and this kind of style. And I just spent the last three weeks getting rid of things that I had bought in my hypnotized fascination with materialism stuff just stuff that makes you feel like you have nice things i got rid of it you can do the same thing a lot of the things that you have a lot of the stuff that you're hoarding in your home that looks nice or has this memory behind it or has that it's literally keeping you entangled in the material world so that you're susceptible to be pulled into the material world more and more with every commercial that comes on, with every ad, with every time you walk through a furniture store or the mall or you see other people's homes. You're surrounding yourself with that world and that dimension and you're gonna remain in it if you do that. And it's not worth it. It's so not worth it. And then I got this absolutely adorable little mason jar wall accent from Kirkland's. You guys know I'm mason jar obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed with these kinds of mirrors. Absolutely amazing pillow. I am ridiculously obsessed 
with succulents. We were obsessed with these and could not say no. My new car, a Lamborghini. I'm just look at it, I'm just look at it. Look at this, there's carbon fiber everywhere. What are we living for? Are we living for things? Or are we living for the people and the animals and the future generations that we're sharing this place with? Because what I see everywhere I turn is people obsessed with how their lawns look, obsessed with how their house looks, obsessed with buying new things and having the latest, coolest gadget. You see this? Yes, I installed Bing. a little remote the other day Bing. to her vanities. Awesome. And it's really quite terrifying because every day there is an animal or a person dying that could have been helped or saved by this privileged society of window shoppers because that's what we're doing. We're looking in nice windows at nice things while our fellow beings, our fellow earthlings, people and animals are suffering and dying. And we're just happy to get a nice new addition to our kitchen. And believe it or not, the picture is from the one spot at Target. I know, I couldn't even believe it myself. Or a nice new addition to our home. Holy crap, it's as big as the wall. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. It's gonna get mounted on the wall up there. And we're all guilty of it. And we all deserve self-actualization. We all deserve to live the life that we want. But the level to which we are worshipping materialism and the level to which we are being sucked into the material dimension, like I said, it's terrifying. Look at the size of this that you've done there. Like, leave your hand up like that. Even spiritual people and motivational speakers and leaders and artists and creators, look at some of their homes. It's beyond what is morally appropriate. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna call them out on it. It's beyond what is morally appropriate. Nobody needs a mansion. I'm serious. When you have children dying and animals dying, give your head a shake and ask yourself if anybody needs a mansion. Dying, the breath is leaving their lungs. Their eyes are rolling to the back of their head and they are dying. And people are buying homes with 25, 35, 45 rooms? What's happened to us? What are we doing? What are we doing with our lives? We have completely lost ourselves. Here we are in the lavish living room. I'm not telling you to sell everything you own, but I'm asking you to reassess how you're living and what you're living for and what you're serving. What are you serving here on this planet? Our addiction to materialism and our fascination and worship of materialism has actually structured our economy in a way where our economy depends on us continuing and perpetuating our addiction to the material world. People's jobs, people's ability to make a living is now dependent on us continuing to want more and more and more and more. We're gonna have to change. If the change that needs to happen on this planet means that we're going to have to create new jobs and change the way that we live, then that's just what we have to do. Change is difficult, but it's not nearly as bad as what we're doing right now and the effect that that's having on humanity as a whole. This is a reason to have a child. How cute is that? Super. Okay, that's my favorite. So this is what I think about shoes. You gotta have at least five pair. Take a picture of it on my arm. Hello, darling. Like it? Yeah. And we can change. We can choose to change. We can choose what we give our consciousness and our attention to and why. So wake, wake up. up and don't be controlled by this sensory perception that you have, which is the ability to see. Don't be controlled and hoard things into your reality because it looks nice. Don't live for that because that's not worth living for.